again. Today we are going to discuss one of the short stories by Jack London to build a fire. In today's class you are going to uh, learn new vocabulary, discuss the plot of the story and the main elements of the story. Before we start with the vocabulary, I would like you to look at the pictures that I have chosen for you. These pictures are taken out from the story. On top of the screen, you can see three questions. In order to answer these questions, you need to look at the pictures carefully. Let's look at the first question together. What is the setting of the story? As you can see, uh, the main character is all alone in the middle of the forest. He is surrounded by snow and he's wearing quite warm clothes. He must be, it must be freezing out there and the temperature must be really low. Uh, what traits does this man possess is the second question. Well, let's look at it again. He's alone in the middle of nowhere. In order to be able to survive in this kind of severe environment, you must be very brave and persistent at the same time. He must be uh, very ambitious as well as he's alone um, out there. Let's look at the third question now. Do you think he will survive in this environment and how? Well, uh, despite the fact that uh, in the last picture we see that he is lying on the ground, we cannot really say whether he is alive or dead. Um, however, on the other hand, we also see that he's trying to make fire and the title of the story to be build a fire also tells some um, hints uh, that he's trying to survive by using a fire. However, whether his tryings uh, uh, are successful or not, we uh, do not know yet. Now, before we start talking about the plot of the story, I would like you to practice the vocabulary a bit. As you can see on this slide, we have three columns. On the first column, you have the uh, sentences taken out from the story. In the middle column, we have the words that you need to define. And in the third column, we have the definitions already. In order to find the meanings, you need to look at the example sentences because they give you a good context and the meaning. Let's look at them together. He walked a few steps, stamping in his feet and waving his arms until reassured by the returning warmth. Let's look at the second one. But the thought asserted itself and persisted until it produced a vision of his body totally frozen. When he could endure no more, he pulled his hands apart. Crick was right, he thought, in the moment of despair that after 50 below a man should travel with a partner. And the last one, the sensation developed into pain that grew acute. Let's look at the definitions now. A. To suffer something difficult or unpleasant in a patient way over a long period of time. This must be the third sentence when he could endure no more. Now let's look at the B. The feeling that a situation is so bad that nothing you can do will change the situation. This must be a moment of despair. Despair. Let's look at the C. Presented itself forcefully as though to say it was true. This must be asserted. Well, asserted itself might also mean to claim something. However, in this context, it means to present itself forcefully. Let's look at the D now. Very serious or um, uh, severe, acute would be the word. Uh, the synonym of it would be again severe. It must, uh, we can use this word in, in another context like severe pain. And the very last one, stamping, which is uh, defined as E, to put your foot down hard and noisily on something. In order to learn vocabulary properly, we also should take into consideration the part of the speech they belong to. Stamp, as we know, is a verb. Assert is a verb as well. Injure is a verb. Despair is a noun. And acute is an adjective. Now, let's look at the pronunciation of these words. Um, let's look at endure, since this is a, a bit more difficult to pronounce. What sounds we have here? E, stress, and then j, jua, in, jua. Yes. In here, the stress comes here, despair, despair. And in the last one, we have this long u sound, cute, acute. OK. 
Okay. Uh, now we are ready to move to a plot of the story. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, um, I will be talking about the plot of the story. <clears throat> reading process must be interesting. Reading process is not only just to read out the words and sentences. We have to feel, we have to understand, and we have to visualize and, in, and even Im Im imagine some events in the story. The story about To Build a Fire by Jack London is very interesting for the readers. It tells us about a man, a, a young miner, who is trying to survive in a very cold Canadian Yukon territory. Against uh, the advice of a more seasoned man, uh, he's trying to continue his uh, actions in this kind of environment. Um, sometimes when we read, we try to predict what will happen next in the story. So first of all, let me read out the beginning of the, the, the first part of the story. Day had dawned cold and gray when the man turned aside from the main Yukon Trail. He climbed the high earth bank where a little travel trail led east through the pine forest. It was a high bank, and he paused to breath at the top. He excused the act to himself by looking at his watch. It was nine o'clock in the morning. There was no sun or promise of sun, although there was not a cloud in the sky. It was a clear day, however, there seemed to be an indescribable darkness over the face of things. That was because the sun was absent from the sky. This fact didn't worry the man. He was not alarmed by the lack of sun. It had been days since he had seen the sun. All right, now let's have a look at the photos that I prepared for you and think what will happen next. I can't imagine that I haven't read the whole story and I can make some predictions. So I think that it will be very cold there at night and the man will try to survive and use his skills to build a fire. It happened. It was his own fault or instead his mistake. He should not have built a fire under the pine tree. He should have built it in an open space, but it had been easier to pull the sticks from the bushes and drop them directly on the fire. Now the tree under which he had done this carried and weight of snow on its branches. No wind had been blowing for weeks and each branch was heavy with snow. Each time he pulled a stick, he took the tree slightly. There had been just enough movement to cause the awful thing to happen. High up in the tree, one branch dropped its load of snow. This fell on the branches beneath. This process continued, spreading through the whole tree. The snow fell without warming upon the man and the fire, and the fire was dead. Where it had burned was a pile of fresh snow. The man was shocked. It was like hearing his own judgment of death. For a moment, he sat and stared at the spot where the fire had been. Then he grew very calm. Perhaps the old man on Sulphur Creek was right. If he had a companion on the trail, he would be in no danger now. The companion could have built the fire. Now he must build the fire again, and the second time he must not fail. Even if he succeeded, he would be likely to lose some toes. His feet must be badly frozen by now, and there would be some time before the second fire was ready. So as we can see, this is the culmination part of the story, which is very exciting and tense for the readers. And I hope that some of my predictions were right about this part. Now let's move on. We're getting closer to the resolution of the story. And based on these pictures, I think that this man, unfortunately, finally will die in such environment. Then the man dropped into what seemed the most comfortable and satisfying sleep he had ever known. The dog sat facing him and waiting. The brief day ended in a long evening. There were no signs of a fire to be made. Never in the dog experience had it known a man to sit like that in the snow and make no fire. As the evening grew darker, its eager longing for the fire mustered it. With much lifting of its feet, it cried softly. Then it flattered its ears, expecting the man's curse. But the man remained silent. Later, the dog howled loudly. And still later, it moved close to the man and caught the smell of death. This made the animal back away. 
A little longer it delayed, howling under the stars that lipped and danced and shone brightly in the cold sky. Then it turned and ran along the trail toward the camp it knew, where there were the other food providers and the fire providers. I hope that you uh, found, have found the story very interesting. So the next part will be uh, me and my colleagues' final discussion about the story. Thank you. Um, now it's time for discussion to talk about the story's main ideas, uh, some elements and author's intentions and uh, also some uh, messages. Yeah, very mind. good, very good, Gotta. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Now, um, the first question is: How does the naturalistic movement affect Jack London's short story "To Build a Fire"? Uh, first of all, uh, let's define the naturalistic movement itself. Um, so the author uses this uh, realism literary movement in the story to show uh, how the nature can be uncaring and how the nature can be violent. And no matter what you do and no matter where you are, so it's always there. Yeah, very. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gotte. Uh, it's also noteworthy that, that uh, the uh, language of the author that uses is very realistic, as if you are, uh, as if the reader is a part of the story itself. Um, and we see the main character, the man, the mm -hmm. protagonist, yes. um, as some kind of the scientific study. You observe uh, um, him as being part of the nature. Yeah, this is what the author tried in the story. To yeah, show that us was, the I think, character yeah, that was the intention. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, no matter where you are and how you can be against the, the nature, so it's more powerful than you. Definitely, yeah. Exactly, okay. yeah. Um, so, the next question is what view does the writer have of the man in To Build a Fire, Sapo? Yeah, well, um, if you look at the story, you will see that the man is the center of the story. And uh, the author tries to portray him as a very brave person, but at some point he's also quite ambitious, as we said in the beginning. Arrogant. Arrogant, yeah, mm -hmm. because he is in the middle of nowhere, literally, and he doesn't have any help. And apparently, as we learn throughout the story, it was his choice. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes there because he thinks that he is uh, brave enough and uh, there is nothing that he cannot... Um, Especially in brutal conditions. Yeah, exactly, exactly, him. yeah. And even when he gets into trouble, instead of reflecting on his actions, he is really saying that, okay, this is nothing. I'm gonna, you know, laugh. Yeah, and there is a moment when he doesn't listen to another, a, a more seasoned minor, mm -hmm. so against, he's against his ideas. Mm -hmm. So I think that... Um, so whatever we think about ourselves, that we are able and we're powerful to overcome some boundaries, I think that we should listen to some more experienced people in our lives. Definitely. That's, that's what the writer wanted to tell us. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And that brings us to the idea that he's quite ambitious, reckless, yeah. and brave and persistent mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Let's look at the last question now. Yeah. What is the moral of the story and how is this connected to our life experiences? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Gotta? Yeah. So, uh, so first of all, the moral of the story, we can summarize the points what we have just talked about. Uh, I think I will repeat the same, is that um, the nature is more powerful than we are. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the moral of the story is that we should listen to each other. And uh, we do not have to be always sure in ourselves that we are able to survive on our own. Yeah, and also the, this ability to, you know, to uh, being able to reflect on, on your actions um, might be really helpful, especially in that kind of situations when you're in trouble. Um, yeah, I think this is it. Uh, yeah, and I hope that the readers will find this interesting story, this, this, this story very interesting, and uh, they will understand what it teaches us and some people yeah. can think to themselves that all right so i can learn something from it definitely yeah. yes yeah. thank you very much Gotta, for thank your you answers so <laughs> thank you